Hello everyone, this is a happy day for me because I get to show you the new LEGO Cargo Train. The set is called Cargo Train. Here's the locomotive. It's a double-ended or dual cab overhead electrified uh, freight engine. And I think it looks distinct. It's similar in some ways to one of the previous ones that they've done, but also has its own features and its own building style. This does feature the new Power Functions 2.0 or Powered Up system. This is remotely controllable. It actually has a working electric motor in it. And I'll show you how that works a little bit later on with a full demonstration of the complete train going around its own track or going around my own Lego City. This works exactly the same uh, front to back and it has just an opening section at either end. The cabs are pretty much identical. They just give you one seat in each and that existing console piece for train control. It's a one by four printed tile that they've had around for a while. And yeah, like I said, it's just the same at either end and they do not have real opening doors on the sides for your minifig to get in and out. Uh, the on off button to power up the hub inside is just right here. It's a simple single click and that gets it started. You can see the light from the top and you can also see the light from the front if you get it from the right angle. Yeah, there we go. And uh, that'll change color depending upon what channel is selected. Again, I'll demonstrate that a little bit later on, but that's pretty much it for the locomotive itself. I just think that it looks kind of nice. Oh yeah, these are new pantograph pieces. So that's cool. Uh, much more useful and usable, I think, than the previous ones that they've done in the past. They've done a couple different variations of this, and this just seems like it would be more useful for more different things for custom builders. And I expect to see that used in some other vehicles and builds in the future as well. This was enjoyable to put together. It has a lot of studs on the side construction right here, which is perfectly flush. And I don't know, I like it. Some people won't, but I do. By the way, the switch I was showing you underneath the engine is included with this set. This railroad crossing is also part of the track build included here, and this gives you a pretty nice flush crossing for vehicles to go over. I'm going to use this as the backdrop to show you this crane car. Now, I've always liked uh, train crane cars more so as models and toys than as the, the real things. I think this one is, is done pretty well. Uh, it, it actually works properly. So you've got the, the knob that you can turn from either side to raise and lower the hook. And the hook has several ways that you can connect things to it because they have the, the uh, bar shaped ends on there. And you can connect you know clips to that. So this is a little bit more useful than usual. And it looks good as well. They have a, uh, a knob on the back of this. Actually, the, the whole thing is on a turntable, of course. But this is hooked up to a worm gear uh, box in there which just allows you to raise and lower the boom so with this zoomed out more I can show you how far that goes up I need to give it a little bit of slack on the line but yeah that'll go up pretty far and you also have the ability to extend so again I need to give it a little more slack you can extend the boom a fair amount more than was possible on some other cranes that they've done I mean this will keep going let me see how far out I can get this to go that's the limit right there so that's actually pretty good you know pretty good reach and this has good strength now obviously you turn this side to side it kind of wants to tilt over you already saw that it's wobbling a bit well they give you these outriggers look at that these outriggers just come right out and rotate down and <laughs> provide additional support and they've got one on either side so if i move this past the little crossing there angle that down that's actually going to work because as long as you're on a flat surface this will just touch the ground it's just the perfect height and it'll give you some stability for actually lifting up some cargo uh, you'll probably want to have the rest of the train hooked up to this or at least the locomotive just for braking force so it doesn't go uh, front to back on you but this is this is good this is something that can actually be played with and i think it looks pretty good as well they even included some slightly unnecessary details such as the cabinet area the kind of engineering cabinet you can actually open this and look at this i've got a panel inside of there that's cool one on either side just identical builds either side just has a sticker on it but it's it's nice to oops i hit that uh, that crossing signal again 
probably not the best choice of uh, display piece here with the, the track, but you get the idea. So yeah, it just helps with the you know the imaginative play of, of having to do work on this or to you know operate it and set it up. And also, of course, you can open up the cab. That whole section just comes off, and then you can put a single figure in there. And they have a couple more of those small modified tile pieces with the the bars vertically on top so they can represent control sticks and that's that the crane can be easily used in conjunction with this flatbed logging car it already has some chains hooked up so it's very easy to just put a hook underneath here and you know lift these up one at a time you can also just kind of dump these things off to the side by moving the stakes down from the side and just going to roll them off if you want and you can also just take those off and even take off the side stakes here completely or leave them on it you know, it's entirely up to you but just use this as a basic flatbed car you know it's a very simple thing but one of the more useful types of rolling stock on any sort of model railroad layout that's actually going to be used for play because you can put just about anything on this including things that are not lego compatible i'm including here or showing you here yet another section of of track you you think i'd I've learned my lesson by now, but, but no, I think this one's actually gonna work without getting in the way. This is just an, an end buffer, you know, a little stopping bumper build that they include for one of the straight uh, portions of track. And that works really well, because you can you can really bang something into it and it's really gonna stop it. So that, uh, I think it, it looks okay. It doesn't look great, but it works really well. And Lego usually doesn't include anything like that. And from what I've seen, a lot of Fans of all ages really appreciate this type of build. The crane can also be used to load and unload this car, which is intended to be kind of a spine car that's set up as a container carrier. So you have two short containers here, and they already have the hoops on top, so you can easily just hook into either of those. And each of these is only attached to the base, to the car, by a single jumper, a single two-by-two two jumper. Otherwise, it's just kind of slotted over uh, some some tiles there so it's very easy to remove each of these leaving behind just the basic car beneath and i mean there's not a whole lot that you can do with this but if you you know take off the the jumpers or even i guess you could just use them as they are but you, know, you could end up using this as a a flatbed car if you have any extra plate pieces you can extend the sides of this off to make it even more useful but i think these containers are pretty good it's nice to get the corrugated steel uh, style panel piece there in the, the red color here and this one has a a crate or a, a pallet there with a small snowmobile this will work right with the 2018 lego city arctic sub theme just a small snow machine that is also attached with only a single jumper makes it easy to get it off and the other one this is intended to be a, a safe uh, uh, transporter, so a, a money transporter. And they've got a, a lock on it here. And inside, so you can open this one up from the sides. Inside, there's, there's another pallet, and this one has gold bars and also some suggestion of just regular Lego money there. And these pallets are intended to be, or to be used with a forklift. So pretty much any of Lego's official forklifts will be able to get right in there and pull these out. Now, if you do not already have an official Lego forklift, one will be provided for you in this set. This thing looks pretty good to me. I like its shaping. It looks pretty modern. It looks pretty complete. The only thing that I personally don't like about it is totally a nitpick, absolutely a nitpick. Just that center gray section that kind of acts as the seat is raised up just a little bit more than I would like but then again it does give good visibility for the the operator so you know a little bit of plus a little bit of minus there but I like the build of this it's actually pretty simple but it's pretty smart it looks good there's just a little bit of forward rake to the roll cage which is good I think uh, some of the forklifts they've done have, have raked it way way forward which is too much but then just leaving it Completely level is a little bit boring and looks a little bit older. I don't know, that's, that's subjective, but the little bit of, of forward movement I think is good. I think the ratio of tire sizes looks pretty good. Maybe the rears are a little bit wide, but I do like the width of the front. And this 
does use the white rubber band. I mean, Lego's had that in circulation, this whole lift section for a while, and it is very strong. So do be careful <laughs> when you pick up something with this. I mean, it does work pretty well, but just don't let your finger slip off because this will propel your cargo straight up in the air quite rapidly. <laughs> just watch out for that. This also has the ability to to lean back. So we've got uh, a ratchet in there so it can lean back. That's a little bit farther than you want to go, but it's better than having nothing. And it does still work just fine. It's perfectly stable to hold it just like this. In real life, you want to hold your, uh, your load nice and low all the time, but you can always just take that rubber band off if you want. Maybe use a little bit of rubber cement in there or put a piece on the back here as a stopper so that when it goes down it'll just stop and then you know it might give you a better look if you want to be able to to pose it like that instead this money transporter van or armored truck uh, has pretty much the standard look of a light commercial vehicle uh, that, you know that lego has been using for some years now which i think is fine i think that front end looks pretty good it's believable enough and yet it's easy enough to build even by fairly young kids just following the instructions with no hassles along the way this has double doors on the back so of course this would be used with the pallet of of money and gold ingots that we saw just a minute ago or less than a minute ago hopefully and there's plenty of space for that pallet in there however you're not going to be able to load this up with the forklift I just showed you from the back, you know, things are just not oriented properly, but they thought of that. All of this swings open to give easy access for loading and offloading. So the forklift would be able to come right up. Let's go ahead and line it up now. It has plenty of space. There's a full set of space to spare on either side. Just go ahead and set that down. Get, get down there, get there. Yeah, there we go. Just give it a little nudge into the center. Perfect. And then close this down. There you go. It works. Can't really ask for much more than that. The play value is good. The look of this, I think, is pretty good. It looks the same from either side. And, of course, for, uh, for a driver, they just have a single seat and a steering wheel in there. And that's just that. I think this works fine. It's nothing too fancy, but it's really all you need for what it is. The last build is a pretty sizable one. It's this yard control tower or signaling tower, which I think is one of the better ones that LEGO has ever made, if not the best. It has good access for the figures to get up there with the very nice ladder on this side, just a good use of that extendable fire engine uh, ladder piece or ladder truck piece. And this has the most basic of useful, sensible action features. You can change the signal from one side to the other just has a red knob on the back which i think works just fine with the color scheme of this so it doesn't stand out unnecessarily and yeah it just does its job i like the look of this overall i think that a lot of kids would really enjoy having this it just feels like it adds a lot of legitimacy to a model layout makes it look and feel a little bit more real look at the inside they've got a coffee maker over there they have a couple of track maps showing you just the track that is included with this set with the default layout so you would assume that they would have switch control up here the door just opens inward for the sake of safety for a figure coming up the the, uh, the chair can rotate around and over on the side there's just a uh, single keyboard so the screens are just you know the ones up above so those supposed to be digital you know flat screen monitors here are a couple of the figures, and there's nothing really special about either of these, and I think that's perfectly fine. I would happily use either or both of these figures in my own layout any day of the week. They just fit with the theme perfectly with the prints that are used for the torsos. I'm fine with there not being uh, prints on the legs for these. I think the faces are just fine, even though you don't get any alternate faces. They just work for the scenario, for the scene, and for the theme. Also included are a couple of these olive green colored uh, railway workers who might be like yard workers or something, you know, working a slightly different branch of the railroad or possibly even a different company within it. But 
Uh, these were, I believe they, they were originally introduced, uh, these color schemes were originally introduced with the blue cargo train from a handful of years ago. Again, no alternate faces to be seen. Good hat there with the dual molded hair built into it. No hair piece by itself is included here, but again, I think that's just fine. And lastly, on the left is the armored truck driver, and on the right is a criminal who's going to have his eyes on that money and gold bullion that's being transferred. So he's got his binoculars there, and they suggest on the box that you put him on the train, on the, the logging car, just kind of sneaking around back there and you know, biding his time and looking for a good opportunity to strike and try to steal that or possibly to communicate back with the rest of his criminal friends somewhere else so this helps to integrate with other possible scenarios from lego city so here's how the remote control system works this has the new controller which is a bluetooth low energy based controller not infrared like the old one so you do not need to have direct line of sight with a receiver there's no uh, IR receiver on board here and this will also work even outdoors or in a sunlit room unlike the infrared ones which were very finicky there it's very easy to get this turned on you push the button on the top you push the button here in the center wait for the two to pair up or to remember each other and then you just use the plus and minus controls to control your speed forward or back and the center red button is for stopping you can also interestingly rotate these around so if you happen to have the wrong orientation now this becomes the forward this becomes the back you know whichever obviously these are this is a double-ended engine so it doesn't matter quite as much but yeah this just works so simply yeah you can also do it like that so this is going to be useful for some different configurations in the future for different types of of uh, you know vehicles and possibly robots that can be hooked up with this system. Speaking of this system, the Power Functions 2.0 or Powered Up system, I'll just give you the quick overview of the components. So controller here, hub here, which is the battery box and the receiver and the speed controller all built into one. So there's no receiver speed controller unit that you have to wire up additionally. And then here's just the power fun the new Power Functions motor which I believe is the same inside as the last one but just has a different controller on it or a different connector excuse me on it which is the we do 2.0 style con uh, connector which is also the same one that's used for the boost system and you have two ports on the hub here the hub and battery box so you can connect two things there control two things at one time with this now this does have I believe it's five channels within it so it can control up to five different hubs uh, they haven't released documentation on how to do that yet but uh, the information is out there for controlling multiple trains from a single controller i'm not a, uh, a super hacker of this stuff i'm not a subject matter expert on technic stuff and electronics there are plenty of people out there who are so if you want to get more into the the nitty-gritty details of how this works be sure to just do a little bit of searching and browsing and you will find a a wealth of information out there but uh, the good news here is that it's bluetooth rather than infrared so it'll work in the sun and you don't need direct line of sight and you don't need that separate unit that the original power functions ones did the bad news is that these systems are not compatible at the very least because the connectors are not so we it will it will have to be seen in the future if lego comes up with good adapters to connect the new to the old you can put the new trains on old track you can put the old trains on the new track that's all completely compatible but uh, it's just the electrical connectors that are different you're looking at the manufacturer's suggested layout for the included track in just this one set. So no additional track has been added here. And it's very generous. It's around 5 feet by more than 2 feet, or uh, the exact dimensions are 147 centimeters by 70 centimeters. It includes 16 straight tracks, 16 turns, and also the one left-sided switch. 
Since Power Functions 2.0, or Powered Up, is a Bluetooth-based system, you can control it from compatible mobile devices, phones, and tablets using the LEGO Powered Up app, which is pretty simple. It only allows you to control one train at a time, and it just allows you to also do some sounds which come out of the speaker of your device, not from the train itself. Like. Overall, I feel like this is a very good train set for its target market of kids who want to play with toy trains and stuff related to them, or LEGO fans in general who want to experience the wonder of moving trains mixed in with their LEGO stuff. Obviously more serious rail fans are just not going to have any interest in this set because it is designed to be a playset for kids. There is no photorealism in the builds, and the designers definitely prioritized play value very strongly over aesthetics. Certainly the merits of the new Powered Up or Power Functions 2.0 system warrant quite a bit of debate, and a lot of that debate has already been going on. Again, I will defer to subject matter experts for, you know, the technical details and the kind of the nitty gritty pros and cons versus the previous system. My personal experiences have been mixed. I certainly very much welcome the move away from infrared control. That was just annoying having to point at the train, especially if it's behind a building or something and you have to kind of walk around or make sure that the, the signal can bounce off a good surface on a wall or something. So all that has been taken care of. It's also nice to be able to control this just from an app so you don't need to have a controller with you if you're just going to be doing one single train as most customers of, of Lego will you know will be experiencing. But I I am not sure about the system in terms of its expandability and and just how much you can do with it without hacking it and without getting aftermarket uh, doodads to, to to open it up a bit because you're not able to even connect multiple things to a single port as it's set up right now. The connector uh, system they have here doesn't stack like the old one did. So there may be some annoying limitations for more serious hobbyists. There is then of course the issue of price and many people will immediately balk when they see the total retail price of this and understandably so. That's, that's a lot of money to pay for a toy. However, I do have to encourage you to look at the prices, the actual retail prices and the price to part ratios for this and the last two modern power functions based uh, cargo train sets from Lego. Those last two uh, cost a little bit less, but came with a lot less uh, in terms of number of parts and also amount of track. This comes with so much more track. It's so much more viable as a set to start with. Uh, I think that's uh, just it just gives you a lot more value. It gives a lot more value to kids who want a train set. Those previous ones have just not included enough track, uh, in in my opinion, for folks who, who really want to enjoy watching a train go around a layout. This is a very respectable sized oval with a nice long siding. You can do all sorts of stuff with that. You can build a lot of stuff inside of that. I feel like you get a very good value with this set relative to other train sets in recent memory from LEGO. So I personally don't have a problem with it, though I do absolutely acknowledge the fact that the retail price for this is a big number. That's it for my look at this set for now though. Please feel free to share your thoughts, what you think about the train, what you think are its pros and cons based on what you've seen here or anything else that you've learned separately. And I will be reviewing the passenger train that came out at the same time as this. You saw a little bit of footage of that in the running segment of this video. And of course, I have plenty of videos about the whole LEGO city that I showed you in that running segment with many more to come, a lot more to be built up there. So stay tuned. Thank you very much for watching and I will talk to you again as soon as I can.